What's going on guys, Reset back with another video, and in this video I'm going through everything you need to know about Doom's Domain. I'll be going through where the loot is, where Doom can spawn, the mythic weapons that Doom drops, the teleporters, and then a bunch of solo looting paths, trio looting paths, and then at the end we're going through some tips and tricks that I really like, so stay around for that. Please like and subscribe to the video if you aren't already, and use code RESUP in the item shop. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's look at the loot first. I don't want to cover too much about this because somebody's gun has already done a video on this, and I'm trying to cover too much of the same stuff he has, so go check that out down below if you want to. But on the west and east side, there's both nine chests on each with one henchman scanny chest as well. The scan chest on the west side is in Yellow House, and the scan chest on east side is down in the basement, in the basement house here. I'll go over some of the best ways to use some of these in the looting paths later. One of the biggest changes is that the doghouse now has four chests, one being in the additional bedroom. One extra here, which is going to mean that a lot of players are going to drop a doghouse just for the chances of getting these four chests. Doom's Castle has five chests in total, but it also has fruit boxes, barrels, and a whole bunch of other floor loot spawns, as well as the natural high ground for the POI. So it's a really powerful place to drop, however the loot is a little bit spread out. Doom can spawn in one of two spots. He can either spawn in the castle or down in the hangar, so it's pretty easy to find him. If he's in the castle and you're late, it's actually quite easy to see if someone's already been fighting him because a lot of the times the castle will just be on fire and that's a pretty easy way to note that he's used his mystical bomb item and that someone's already been fighting him and they potentially already have the loot. Once you're flying over, you can also look down in the hangar and sometimes you'll see him down there, so you can actually spot where he is really early on in your drop. You've really got to watch out when you're fighting him because he always hits you and I've not found a consistent way yet to take no damage while fighting him. If you know, put it down in the comments down below. So just make sure you have heals while you're fighting him. Doom drops three important items. Firstly is the vault key. Secondly is Doom's mystical bomb. And then he also drops the arcane gauntlets. The vault is located down in the hangar. So once you've got the key, simply just go in there and open up the vault. There's an amazing amount of loot in here. And most importantly for this meta, you can get an insane amount of heals from here. Since the chest spawn rate is only 50 to 75%, this vault gives you guaranteed fantastic loot. So if you win Doom's Domain, you're definitely going to leave here with absolutely insane loot. Doom's Mystical Bomb is an item that takes up one inventory slot and fires one massive green charged energy bomb that explodes and burns the pieces all around it. If you don't know anything about the fire mechanic in this game, it burns wood, but doesn't burn metal or brick. So use this on an opponent's base that's made of brick or metal, you're just going to notice that it's going to damage it but not catch fire to the whole place. But if you use it on a wood base, you'll see that it'll burn up and the fire will actually spread. If an opponent's in the base, even if it's made of wood, this will not damage them so it will not go through the builds. But if they touch the fire for too long, they will take damage this way. The bomb itself does 60 damage, but obviously the radius of it is really, really big. The bomb also has a cooldown of 20 seconds between uses. In solos, honestly this probably isn't worth an inventory slot, but in trios, in a stacked endgame, or even just in like the 4th and 5th zone, this is going to be incredibly useful for griefing people, and I'm really interested to see how it turns out. The other weapon that he drops is the Arcane Gauntlet. These do 35 damage and have an unlimited ammo with no cooldown. Now, the damage to each player really isn't that much, especially with the slow fire rate. So firstly, if you see someone using this against you, the easiest way is not to build because it's just going to rip straight through your builds. All you want to do is just spray them back to counter it. While equipping this, you can also double jump, and this takes your jump from one tile up to two and a half tiles, so it's really powerful. Again, I don't really feel like this is worth an inventory slot for solos. But the real power here is again, not in solos, but in trios. If someone takes this in a trio, they're going to immediately grief people in the end game. They're just going to fire this onto a team repeatedly over and over and all it's going to do is just going to waste their materials. Combine these two together in a trio, one person having the bomb and one person having the gauntlets, this team will almost definitely never have to worry about Storm Surge. Previously in Pleasant Park, there was a teleportation where you could go from the gas station all the way over to the bridge. Now that's still here, however they've added a ton more. I'm going to talk a bit more about these in the individual routes and how you can use these, but you can see on screen the map of where these go. There's pretty much a place you can teleport in every single building, so you can actually rotate around this POI really quickly. Obviously, you have to be really careful about using these because if someone's camping the other end, that's a free kill for them. So this first looting path is probably my favourite. You land on the ground floor of the castle, break the wall here and grab the two chests that are on the floor. Walk through the lower floor, looting the floor spawns, break the barrel, looting the fruit boxes as you go, then go through the door and break the other four barrels. A lot of times Doom will spawn one layer above you, which means you can go up, eliminate him from here, go back down, take the toilet and that'll take you right next to the vault. This entire looting path is done really really quickly and you can get into the vault in under two minutes this way. Even if you don't get any chests, there's plenty of floor spawns here and you've guaranteed yourself five barrels and some fruit. This next looting path has you loot the west side of this. I'm not going to count landing at blue because this is slightly outside the POI, but a lot of times people land out here and push in as well. You land on the roof of green and break through to grab the chest here, then break down again, grab some floor spawns, 
break through the next wall to get into the other chest in the roof, and then continue your way down to get the chest in the floor. There are plenty of ammo boxes here, so you can just harvest them as you go. Then you can see there's a toilet here. Ensure that you know the next house is unlooted, because if not, someone could be camping the toilet it's at the other side. But you can go through the toilet, which will immediately take you into the garage of the next house. Again, you can fully loot this house, and then take the next toilet through to the next house. In here, there's henchman chest, so you want to make sure that you don't finish the henchman here so that you can use this. And then there's also a chest in the roof. These three houses should give you plenty of loot to start fighting, so you can go find where Doom is, get that card, and get the vault. Or disengage. This next looting path has you land in the fancy house, which is down in modern, in the southeast corner of the POI. And you can land upstairs so you can get the first chest, eliminate the henchman, then go downstairs to get the second chest from the garage. While flying in, you should keep an eye out to ensure that there's no one in the basement house next to you. And then you can go through the toilet and that'll take you straight to the basement of this other house. You get to grab the chest that's down here, and then you can break the floor from the chest above you as well. Alternatively, if there's not a henchman at this house, you can take the henchman that you eliminated earlier and throw him over here. Then you can grab the scan chest from the basement and also grab these two chests. So there's four potential spawns of chest and one guaranteed scan chest here on the floor. While you're flying in, you should have ensured that you're looking to see if Doom is in the bunker. Then you can push straight down there, get the elimination, grab the chest there, and then get the vault. Doghouse also has four chests, so you can basically just land anywhere in Doghouse, loot this building, and then go straight over to the castle and loot that ground floor there as well. This is a good looting path, however, Doghouse is often contested because there's four chests here and people just know it as a good spot. For trios here, I see two main strategies utilized. One strategy involves taking castle, which means you get the loot here, and the potential of getting Doom spawn on the castle as well, giving him his loot and the vault card. And the other strategy involves going into the bunker, getting the loot there, and blocking off the opponents from getting the vault. If your strategy is to not go to the castle, you want to ensure that you get all of the houses on the east or west side. This will give you nine chests in those houses alone, and one scan chest. Then if you push the bunker, there's an additional four chests, and obviously you're blocking the player from the loot. There's also the potential that Doom will spawn in the bunker, and you can immediately get the vault this way. If you're going to land at east or west, you could also potentially have one player land on the opposite side. So if, for example, your goal was to control the east side, you might have one player land on the west side on green on an uncontested house, and then push over to get back to his teammates after looting there. This will cut off loot from your opponents and give you a much larger area to loot. If you're going to land in the castle, you should probably try to take the red house and dog house as well, as this will give you the majority of the loot. The players can all then push the basement and all get the barrels together. If all three players land at castle, there's just not enough loot for all three of you, so you're just not going to be able to fight the other player as well. You're going to be at the disadvantage straight away, so you are going to have to land at other houses as well. Okay, so lastly, let's get into a few tips and tricks for the area that I've learned. So one of the first things that's really interesting is that you can actually block off the vault by using the portal floor. You can throw the portal floor into the first tile of the vault, and this will actually create two metal walls where you couldn't previously build. This will protect you in the vault for much longer as your opponents will have to break through two fully built metal walls. If you don't have a portal fort, the normal way to block the vault is similar to the way you used to have to do it in the grotto, where you'd have to build six metal walls all the way around the entrance. You can also build another box straight out here, just to give it another layer of protection if you have the materials. You gotta watch out for people camping the vault, just as every single vault, and they usually do this up here on the ledge to the left of the vault. This gives them a right hand peek on anyone coming in, and they can also hold an angle on the teleporter toilet to come through here. As always, you need to be careful of people camping these toilets because it is going to be pretty frequent that people are going to come through here to grab loot. There's nearly always a purple combat left in the vault, so if you have shambles loot and you're rotating through here, you can easily upgrade your shotgun this way. On the east side of the castle, there's a little window you can crawl through here. It looks like a weird height where you'd have to build a ramp and then edit it to get through, but you can actually just open this and just jump straight into it. You'll catch stuff on the ledge and then crouch straight through, and this is where the barrels are. Hope you guys enjoyed that video and learned a lot. Please like and subscribe if you aren't already. Hope you guys have a good day. I'll catch you later. See ya!